My name's Abe, and when we recorded this podcast, I was a first-year UBC medical student, and I came up with some analogies that helped me wrap my head around some of the trickier concepts that I came across, and I shared those uh, concepts or those analogies with my PBL group and had a pretty good response that seemed to help a lot of folks out, so I figured I'd share my take with you. So re-entry circuits are one of those concepts that I just couldn't wrap my head around. The way I think of a re-entry circuit actually is of a couple roads in the backcountry with a bunch of cars driving down them, almost like a car race. I've got it set up in my mind like this. There's this one road that comes, uh, say, going north, and then uh, the road splits into two roads with some different physical characteristics, and then the roads join again and keep going. And these roads are analogous, analogous to conducting tissue in the heart, so this is where the action potentials travel. And instead of action potentials, I just think of cars. It sort of makes sense to me. The one thing that you got to wrap your imagination around is that when the cars come to an intersection and the road splits, the car splits and sends an identical car down each road. One of the roads is uh, this dusty, flat, open road that cars can just drive super fast on. That's analogous to a conducting fiber that's got a really fast conduction velocity and a really long refractory period. So the speed of the car is related to the conduction velocity and the amount of dust that the car kicks up when it drives in this dusty road is represented representative of the refractory period. So while the dust is still in the air, the uh, roadway would, would be refractory or the conducting pathway would be refractory. Now for a reentry circuit to occur, we also need another pathway that's connected and that would be this potholy uh, wet road. This road, it's got a slower conduction velocity because of all the potholes and it's all muddy and wet and that keeps the dust down. So it's actually got a pretty fast refractory period. Now, in a normal scenario with no uh, reentry circuit set up, we'd have the SA node sending out action potentials or sending cars down, down the road. They split, one car whips around the fast, flat, dusty road, sends up a big rooster tail of dust and uh, continues along its way. The other car goes down the bumpy, muddy, wet road. It takes a long time and uh, doesn't kick out much of a much of a dust tail, but it's gonna run into the split part of the first car here. Now, when the cars run into each other, that's it. They're toast and everything stops. Same way as two action potentials run into each other, no, no more action potential travels. Now, in order to send up a re-entry circuit, we need a premature beat, and it's gotta be timed just right. Well, imagine we get a normal beat, and what happens is what we just described, but imagine we then get right after that another premature beat. That premature beat's gonna come along and it's gonna split. The car going down the fast road is pretty quickly gonna run into the dust tail of the car that just went ahead of it in the normal beat. And when a car goes into the dust, can't see anything, crashes, that's it. Same way as an action potential can't travel through uh, conducting fibers that are in the refractory period. Now the other car is gonna start bumping along the wet uh, pothole road going pretty slowly. And remember this road has very little, very uh, short refractory time because of all the water. And it's just gonna bounce along and it's gotta be timed just right so that when uh, that car gets to the end of, the, of its pathway, the fast road's refractory period has ended and all the dust is settled. So this car is able to speed up, it splits, sends one car continuing along down the road, uh, basically to send action potentials to the rest of the heart. And the other part of that split travels backwards down the fast, dry road, sending up a big rooster tail of dust until it gets to the, to the starting point, which point it splits again. It sends one car backwards down the original road, back to, uh, that would be up towards the SA node, and then the other split continues along the wet potholy road, bouncing along again. And by the time it gets to the end of the wet potholy slow road, the dust is all settled from the fast road. So it's able to basically just keep going. Whips down the fast, flat, dusty road, sends up a big rooster tail of dust, does the same thing, uh, splits going up and down towards the rest of the heart, and it's able to re-enter the um, slow pathway again down that bumpy wet road and it just keeps going like this and so this is why we call it a re-entry circuit so this car just keeps re-entering this circuit sending out splits or action potentials to the rest of the heart and this can just keep going
Now you might say, well, what happens when a nor when the SA node sends out a normal beat? Because we just had one premature beat. So chances are that that normal beat is not going to be able to travel because the conducting system is likely going to be refractory because of the splits that have been sent off by this re-entry circuit. In reality, the circuit is happening at a very fast rate. Because each split or action potential causes the heart to beat, re-entry circuits cause a very fast heart rate, also known as a tachycardia. Therefore, a rapid heartbeat can be driven by re-entry circuits. The reason a condition such as untreated ventricular tachycardia is dangerous is that long, sustained runs of ventricular tachycardia can transition to ventricular fibrillation, which, when left untreated, can lead to death. So how do we get out of this, you might ask? Well, if we understand the concepts of the different refractory periods and conduction velocities in these pathways, we can understand the treatments that we use. So a couple of them are pharmacological treatments and electrical treatments. So for pharmacological treatments, we can, for instance, try to slow down the conduction velocity by giving a sodium channel blocker. That'd be analogous to throwing a whole bunch more potholes in the road just to slow everything down with the hope that uh, one of the cars runs into the dust plume or the refractory zone uh, of one of the other ones. Another option would be to give a potassium channel blocker, and that extends the refractory period. So that'd be like drying out the wet road so that it also throws up a dust plume, increasing the chances that one of the cars runs into a refractory part of the, of the bumpy road and, and everything stops. Lastly, we can try a cardioverting. So that would be uh, giving an electrical shock to the heart in order to send the whole heart into a refractory period so that everything stops. And as you can see, this circuit is not uh, controlled by the physiological controls that control the normal heartbeat. So we know the parasympathetic and the sympathetic system have a lot of input on the SA node and the AV node and can modulate the heartbeat. The, the, the heart rate, the parasympathetic and sympathetic system don't really act on this circuit. And so the heart rate here will be driven by the reentry circuit. In all of these treatments, the hope is that the regular beat of the SA node takes over and we sort of get back to the beginning where with no uh, premature beat, everything was working fine. So it's important to realize that this can occur in a tiny, tiny part of the conducting circuit in one of the atrium or one of the ventricles, or it can occur over almost the whole heart. Uh, one condition is Wolf-Parkinson's-White syndrome, where a accessory pathway between the atria and the ventricles allows a circuit to be set up uh, running through that accessory pathway and then through the AV node back into the atrium. So that's one very big example. And as I said, we can go to a very, uh, a very small example too. So these concepts are completely scale independent. I don't know if I have a tagline. I, I hope that uh, by using this analogy, you can really wrap your head around the factors that go into setting up a reentry circuit. And you can see how modulating those factors, so changing the refractory period, changing the conducting velocity, could have pretty big effects on the reentry circuit itself or starting or stopping one. And you can see how premature beats are needed. And you can see how important it is to have this perfect storm of timing and different physical characteristics of the conducting pathway. I'm Abe and that's my take.